Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out. And in the video today, the man who was nominated for the Nobel Prize 84 times, but never won. Personally nominated for the Nobel Prize a record 84 times, Arnold Johannes Wilhelm Sommerfeld was one of the most influential physicists of all time, both because of his own accomplishments in the field and the many dozens of his students who turned into superstars in the world of science, including having four doctoral students go on to win the Nobel Prize, along with three of his other postgraduate students also taking home the award. This is actually the most eventual Nobel laureates all taught by a single person in history. Born on December 5, 1868, in Konigsberg, East Prussia, Summerfield began his career as a student of mathematics and the physical sciences at Albertina, aka the University of Konigsberg, in his hometown. He received a PhD there on October 24, 1891. After a year of compulsive military service ended in 1893, unlike so many academics of his era, Summerfield continued to serve as a volunteer for the next eight years on the side. Physically impressive with a Prussian bearing and wearing a fencing scar in his magnificently moustached face, while in the service, Summerfield was famously described as managing to give the impression of a colonel of the Hussars rather than a bookworm academic. As for that scar, in his first year of study, the near compulsory drinking bouts and fencing duels not only resulted in said scar, but also hindered his studies significantly, which he later came to regret as wasted time. Apparently making up for lost efforts in his youth, Summerfield went to the University of Göttingen, and after two years as an assistant to a more experienced mathematics professor, he earned his authorization to teach at the university level in 1895. Rapidly moving up the ranks, he was appointed to chair the mathematics department at the Burke Academy in Klosthal Zellerfield in 1897. The following year, he became the editor of the famous Encyclopédie der Mathematischen Wissenschaften, a post he held through 1926. Summerfield moved on to become Chair of Applied Mechanics at the Konglisch Technische Hochschule Aachen. Sorry about the pronunciation on that one. It was in Aachen that he produced his theory of hydrodynamics. Also at Aachen, Summerfield mentored Peter Debye, who later won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1936 for his contributions to the study of molecular structure. In 1906, Summerfield accepted the position as director of the new Theoretical Physics Institute at the University of Munich, where he mentored Werner Heisenberg in hydrodynamics theory. Heisenberg later won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1932 for the creation of quantum mechanics. While in Munich, Summerfield also mentored Wolfgang Pauli on his thesis on quantum theory, and Pauli also went on to win a Nobel Prize in Physics in 1945 for his discovery of the eponymous Pauli expulsion principle, which stated that two or more identical fermions can not be in the same quantum state within a quantum system at the same time. If all of that wasn't yet enough, he also mentored Hans Beth while at the University of Munich. Beth was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1967 for his theory of stellar nucleosynthesis, i.e. when chemical elements in stars change due to nuclear fusion. While his own direct contributions to advancing the world of physics were prodigious, including his pioneering work in quantum theory, it was arguably for his teaching ability that Summerfield was most revered in his lifetime, with Albert Einstein once remarking, What I especially admire about you is that you have, as it were, pounded out of the soil such a large number of young talents. Mathematician Morris Klein further stated of Summerfield that he was at the forefront of the work in electromagnetic theory, relativity, and quantum theory, and he was the great systemizer and teacher who inspired many of the most creative physicists in the first 30 years of this century. Famed Jewish mathematician, physicist, and Nobel Prize winner Max Born, who was forced to flee Germany in 1933, went on about Summerfield's talents for cultivating young minds who so often went on to great scientific achievements of their own, stating, Theoretical physics is a subject which attracts youngsters with a philosophical mind who speculate about the highest principles without sufficient foundations. It was just this type of beginner that he knew how to handle, leading them step by step to a realization of their lack of actual knowledge and providing them with the skill necessary for fertile research. He had the rare ability to have time to spare for his pupils in spite of his duties and scientific work. In this friendly and informal way of teaching, a great part was played by invitations to join a scheme party on the Sudelfeld, two hours by rail from Munich. There, he and his mechanic were joint owners of a ski hut. In the evening, when the simple meal was cooked, the dishes were washed, the weather and snow properly discussed, the talk invariably turned to mathematical physics, and this was the occasion for the receptive students to learn the master's inner thoughts. Going on about the man himself, Born stated, 
Arnold Summerfield was one of the most distinguished representatives of the transition period between classical and modern theoretical physics. The work of his youth was still firmly anchored in the conceptions of the 19th century, but when in the first decennium of the century the flood of new discoveries, experimental and theoretical, broke the dams of tradition, he became a leader of the new movement, and in combining the two ways of thinking he exerted a powerful influence on the younger generation. This combination of a classical mind, to whom clarity of conception and mathematical rigor are essential, with the adventurous spirit of a pioneer, are the roots of his scientific success, while his exceptional gift of communicating his ideas by spoken and written word made him a great teacher. Adding to his list of achievements, Sommerfeld eventually became chair of the Deutsche Physikalische Gesellschaft in 1918, a position previously held by Albert Einstein. With the rise of the Nazi party in Germany, however, Sommerfeld was forced to watch many of his esteemed colleagues have to flee the country. As the aforementioned Morris Klein notes, Summerfield's life was saddened toward the end of his career by events in Germany. Anti-Semitism, always present in that country, became virulent in the Hitler period, and Summerfeld was obliged to witness the emigration of famous colleagues, including Einstein. All he could do was use the friendships he had built up during a one-year stay in the United States and a one-year round-the-world trip to help place the refugees. The loss of so many of its best men in this way, together with World War II, destroyed the scientific strength of Germany, and Sommerfeld felt obliged to continue teaching until 1947, long after the usual retirement age of 65. On that note, Sommerfeld had intended to retire much earlier, in 1936, putting forth one of his prized pupils, the aforementioned Nobel Prize winner Werner Heisenberg, as his hoped successor. However, as Heisenberg, like Sommerfeld, was considered by the Nazi party to be a Jewish sympathizer, ultimately the decidedly unaccomplished anti-Semite Wilhelm Müller, with a lot of help from the Reich Education Ministry, was very controversially appointed to replace Sommerfeld as Professor of Theoretical Physics, despite Müller not even being a theoretical physicist. Unsurprisingly, Muller was dismissed from the position in 1945 as part of the denazification process that followed World War II. As for Sommerfeld's once patriotic views, he wrote to Einstein shortly after Hitler took power, I can assure you that the misuse of the word national by our rulers has thoroughly broken me of the habit of national feelings that was so pronounced in my case. I would now be willing to see Germany disappear as a power and merge into a pacified Europe. In any event, as for his own Nobel Prize aspirations, as alluded to, Sommerfeld's contributions to theoretical physics were many and included groundbreaking work in quantum theory, including co-discovering the Sommerfeld-Wilson quantization rules in 1915, electromagnetism and hydrodynamics, and significantly advanced knowledge of X-ray wave theory, among other things. Among his many awards were the Max Planck Medal, the Lorentz Medal, and the Orsted Medal, and he was also a member of the Royal Society, the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, the Indian Academy of Sciences, and the Academy of Sciences of the USSR. However, although he was nominated an astounding and record-setting 84 times, the only other person who is close is Otto Stern, who was nominated 82 times before finally winning in 1943, Sommerfeld never won a Nobel Prize. Sommerfeld died on April 26, 1951, at the age of 82, as a result of a traffic accident that occurred while taking his grandchildren for a walk. At the time, he was quite hard of hearing and did not hear the shouted warnings before he stepped in front of a moving truck. The distinguished scientist died two months later as a result of the injuries sustained in that accident. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and do not forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, I'd also like to thank our patrons on Patreon. If you're interested in helping us out in making these daily videos, please do consider heading over to patreon.com forward slash today I found out. We've also got loads of great perks lined up for people who support us. So go check that out. There's a link in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.